Welcome back everyone to another video. Today we're going to show you how to replace two different types of electrolytic capacitors, surface mount style and through hole style. This guide assumes that you have a good grasp on soldering skills. If you're just starting out, be sure to check out our introductory guide linked in our description. And please exercise safety and caution when working with electrolytic capacitors, including eye protection and hand protection. Applying too much heat to components like these can actually cause them to explode. I'm not kidding. Uh -huh. In this guide, we'll be using a curved soldering tip. With practice and trying different iron tips, you'll likely develop a preference one way or another. Before starting, take a picture of the existing capacitor placement. When you are replacing many capacitors, this can be a useful guide to remember which caps go where, as well as which values each capacitor should be. Replacement capacitors should match or slightly exceed the original capacitance value, marked as UF or microfarads, and should match or exceed the original voltage rating. Moving on, we're going to add flux to both exposed connections on either side of the capacitor. Use your soldering iron to add leaded solder to each capacitor leg or connection. Adding in leaded solder will cause the original unleaded solder to mix chemistries with the fresh material, resulting in a lower melting temperature. This ensures an easier removal with a lesser risk of rip pads or burning. Next, heat one leg of the capacitor and gently lift up. The goal is not to pull the capacitor off, but to simply raise the leg up off the board. Repeat the same step on the other leg. You will repeat this process going back and forth until the capacitor is fully removed. Clean off any flux residue or burnt flux using cotton swabs and IPA. Cut a small strip of your solder braid or wick using your flush cut. Apply fresh flux to each of the capacitor pads. Hold the solder braid and wick over the pad using your tweezers. Apply heat with your soldering iron to the top of the solder braid. Avoid scrapping the solder wick against the pad as this can result in a torn or lifted pad. It is advised to only press straight down or gently glide the wick across the pads until all solder is absorbed into the wick. Once more, clean any excess flux residue or burnt flux using cotton swabs and IPA. Apply fresh flux to each capacitor pad and apply fresh leaded solder to only one of the pads. Pay attention to the correct orientation of the capacitor. Use your photo reference from earlier and heat the pad with the fresh solder and slide the capacitor into place. Do not mind precise placement at this step as we can align this more carefully in the next step. If the component requires adjustment, heat the one joint and move the component as needed. Finalize your capacitor installation by applying a fresh leaded solder to the other pad. Do your best to heat both the capacitor leg and the pad at the same time to ensure a proper connection and clean any flux using cotton swabs and IPA. Let's take a look now at a through hole capacitor on a DMG. In this next phase, we're going to grab the capacitor you are removing and flip the board over to locate the solder connections you tinned earlier on the rear side of this PCB. Apply flux to the capacitor leg solder points. Gloves and eye protection are a necessity here. The goal now is to heat both joints of the capacitor at once while applying a gentle downward force on the capacitor in your grip. Your choice in soldering iron tip will make this step of the process either easier or more difficult. For larger capacitors, you may need to go back and forth between both connections to fully remove the capacitor. Next, cut a small strip of your solder braid or wick using your flush cutters. Apply fresh flux to each of the capacitor vials, which are the holes where the capacitor legs were connected. Hold the solder braid or wick over the pad using your tweezers. Then apply heat with your soldering iron to the top of the solder braid. Avoid scraping the solder wick against the via. It is advised to only press straight down or gently glide the wick across the vias until all solder is absorbed into the wick. You should be able to clearly see the hole through the via at this point. Wrapping things up, thread your new capacitor's legs through the now clean vias. Ensure the capacitor orientation is correct. Use your photos from earlier to double check the orientation. Bend the legs at an angle to hold the capacitor in place while you solder. Flip the board over and apply flux to the base of the legs where they stick out of the PCB. Heat the via and the legs simultaneously as you introduce some fresh solder to the connection. 
After ensuring the connection looks great, use your flush cutters to trim any excess length of the capacitor legs. And clean the connections once more with IPA and cotton swabs. And that's it! Now you know how to completely replace surface mount electrolytic capacitors and a through-hole capacitor. We know we covered a lot here, so we will have a link to the written guide in the description if you need a reference. If you enjoyed the video, shoot us a like and hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time!